Hey guys, Armor Gun here. Let's get gun pilled with another dose of gun education. Merch. Today we are checking the Sturmgewehr out of the gun library to give you guys a closer look. Now, as always with these videos, our goal is to give you a better understanding of this rifle, how it came to be, where it came from, and ultimately how to run it effectively. You know, should you ever find yourself in World War II Europe out on the battlefields where this thing was from. Sit back, relax, say hi to Casual Dishka, who is favoring a boonie cap today. I'll take you through a brief history. Not too much, just enough to make you dangerous. We'll review the controls, the ergonomics, which are very important and often overlooked. The pros, the cons, of course, the gun ASMR review, the most satisfying element of this little beauty. We'll kick things off with the top facts about this little guy. But first, question of the day brought to you by our channel partner, Rhino Metals, more on them later. Guys, if you could, again, say this is uh, just post-apocalyptic whatever, Sturmgewehr or one of the OG AK-47s, actual AK-47, not AKM, which one are you taking and why? Fallout Arm wants to know. I'll respond at the end of the video with my answer. There's a couple reasons why I'd pick one over the other and uh, we'll go with that. But these guns are very similar and this one was a direct result of the Russians getting their butts kicked by that one at a certain point in time uh, before they turned the tides and kicked the butts of that guy all the way back to where it came from. And if you want to see me disassemble this thing, which is incredibly easy, and comment on the internals like a proper gun nerd, head over to my B channel, right on up here, Arm and Armory, where we do that kind of thing. Also gonna include a bonus video for this guy over there because technically Hitler hated this gun. He was not in for this thing at all. We'll cover that in a separate video on the B channel as well. Those will both be linked in the description below, along with a bunch of other great resources and channel partners, such as UF Pro, awesome combat gear, mirror safety, people of Ohio, I'm feeling for you. Also UF Pro and goat guns. <laughs> oh, okay, that's enough. It's gun pill time. Alrighty guys, your top facts on the Sturmgewehr. We are 36 and three quarter inches approximately long, about 11 pounds with an empty mag. Rate of fire is lower 500s, but can vary depending on the ammo and the power of your spring and whatnot. They made a hair over 400,000 of these things in total. And if you wanna pick one up today, the, the new reproductions that are gonna be coming out are under two grand. The uh, full invasion mode equipped uh, transferables Stateside are gonna set you back, man, in the neighborhood of 40 grand if it's in nice shape. Like, not cheap, none of this stuff is. Uh, if you're in Europe, it's a fraction of that, but still pricey. This was designed by Schmeisser. Now, now we're talking. You stay over there, Volmer. <laughs> but uh, uh, designed between 38 and 43, and was originally the uh, MKB 42, which is really cool looking. It's actually, oh, it's a sexy looking gun. They kind of changed a few things when they, when they refined it and they released this in greater numbers. And this is actually, you know, this is the final form, SCG 44. Um, with the exception, there was a, another version that was gonna come out right at the end of the war and it never got really off the ground. There's a, there's a handful, but uh, yeah, this is, this is the gun. That's where it came from. Let's get hands on with it. Alrighty guys, controls. This thing is very simple and very ergonomic and surprisingly modern um, in execution. So. We got your safety selector right here. We can see S, it's in safe. Nice quick stroke down, you're in fire. There's also a select fire selector. So this one, E for Einzelfeuer or semi-auto. On this side, if you push it through, D for Dauerfeuer or full auto. Magazine release, nice big old button right there, just like the MP40. It's not fenced though, but it is fairly low profile. These mags, double stack, double feed, really nice design. They lock in there really quite well as well. And it's, it's honestly, it's like an AR. It is like an AR. Really slick. AR fanboys out there, you're welcome. And man, this gun is incredibly satisfying. We'll get to that, we'll get to that. Um, your rear sight, it's a tangent adjustable way out to 800 meters, which is optimistic. The eight millimeter Kurtz was still a pretty effective round, but it would have been designed for a much closer engagement than that. And your front sight is a hooded post. And that's it, very easy to operate. Now ergonomics, well, this gun 
is surprisingly comfortable to shoulder. Nice smooth stock here, gives you a nice cheek weld, which sets you right down nice in front of those sights. So I don't know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. You'd think they could have probably moved the sights a little further back, get a bit more sight radius. Still would have been really quick sight acquisition. Um, just a bit better, a little more practical accuracy that way, but honestly it works really well. The best aspect though is just all the controls being right here on the left. Everything is so easy to manipulate. Everything right here at your fingertips, exactly where you want it. One major downside though was this handguard design. This is right on the freaking barrel, like literally. In my disassembly video on the V channel, I'll pull this off and you'll see this is literally the barrel and this little stamped section sitting right on here. And it uh, it's gonna radiate that heat really quickly right into your hand. Any amount of you know continuous fire, more than maybe a mag, you're probably gonna want gloves. The fire rate on these things is really quite slow, which makes it nice and easy to keep on target. And honestly, this thing soaks up the recoil. That long action in there gives the bolt plenty of time to run back. Big old spring in here soaks that up and just makes us incredibly controllable to shoot and keep on target. Like the MP40, the pistol grip is rigged back pretty far. That would be nicer if it was a little more vertical, but you also have a threaded muzzle. Um, same kind of style, actually, as you'll see on the later 8Ks. The idea there would have been potentially a suppressor or be able to use rifle mount grenades. Um, the only problem with the rifle mount grenades though is there was no real gas shut off with this thing. So shooting those would really hammer the action and that wouldn't have been great. All right guys, your ASMR review. Wow, this gun is packed with satisfaction. I love this oversized magazine release. These things just come right in and out and they're supported pretty well too. So they, they feel good. Feels good inserting that magazine. The safety feels nice. The trigger, Feels nice as well. A little bit of creep in there, but ultimately not bad. But the defining element, the most satisfying thing you can do with your Sturmgewehr at home is rack that action. Oh. Just so good, so good. It's even satisfying to watch. Carrier picks up the bolt, yanks it back. Oh, so good, so good. Guys, question of the day follow-up. In a post-apocalyptic wasteland world, would I take an OG AK-47 or a Sturmgewehr? Oh, honestly guys, this was tough and I actually went back and forth a couple times until I remembered one thing that really set me, set me down the path of the one I would ultimately take. And that is the AK. I would actually take the AK. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, well, ultimately it's because this thing is just not gonna die. This is gonna go on, especially the milled one. This will run on till the end of time. These guys here weren't built with the same level of durability in mind as those milled AKs. I mean, the milled AKs went away because commies can't have nice things. <laughs> but uh, but still, uh, this thing just wasn't made to just last forever. They understood that these things were expendable and that they would eventually wear out. And at that point in time, that's fine. If a soldier survived long enough to wear one of these things out, they'd give him a new one. But that aside, this also had a nice slower fire rate, but a little more practical than the AK. The round is slightly less powerful, but the AK round is a little more powerful than I think it needs to be for just a dual rifle. So this being a little bit slower, you can serve the ammo a little bit more, a little more usable and practical. The mag is still nice, double stack, double feeds. Great, all good stuff, all good stuff. I also greatly prefer the ergonomics on this thing. Everything is nice set up here. Selector's mag change action even the type of mag change being a insert with a press button over the paddle rock and lock just like this i was gonna take this but that's just it the buttstock is a critical element of this firearm the recoil spring extends into here and if this gets damaged or swells up with moisture and that can no longer cycle properly you use your gun so that's just something that i'm not concerned about on the ak so guys Milled AK. <laughs> and it's got a nicer trigger. So, and it's actually a little lighter too. Anyways, um, there you go. That's, that's that. And this is a beautiful Rhino Metal safe. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. I really should have saved the segment for the morning. My uh, morning voice is my, my go-to voice. Anyways, that's a quick tour. There you go, bye-bye. Back to final thoughts on this little guy, which, you know what, I already gave to you. 
amazing ergonomics. Uh, a little bit, a little bit shy in the, maybe the durability um, aspect when compared to something like the AK, the milled AK. Oh, but man, the ergonomics of this thing just freaking kick butt. Nice controllable fire rate, nice controllable like impulse with the, the long action that just soaks up the recoil. And honestly, for our first crack at a firearm, they did really well. And I'm thinking a lot of guys on the good side were lucky that Hitler gave this thing so much grief that he did. Because if it had been given more attention and rolled out in greater numbers earlier, I think there would have been a lot more, a lot more loss of life than um, already there was. So, and that's just speaking to the, the attributes of this gun. Like this is a pretty incredible gun for the time. And considering there was nothing really before it that would have informed such a, you know, such a design. So mad props to that thing. It is freaking crazy. And it directly led to this guy, which honestly, man, where was NATO when they were like Germany, Nazi bastards and freaking Soviet commies. They're, they're doing the proper assault rifles. Whereas the West, don't get me wrong. Love the G3, love the FAL, love the OG AR-10s. The M14 is kicking around here somewhere. Yoink. But, uh, Man, oh, Britain, Britain knew what was up. They were working on their 280. That would have been a much better cartridge. Uh, I point at the Sten for some reason when I say Britain. I should just point at the Lewis gun. It's a nice BSA, takes me right back to uh, Peaky Blinders. End of season one, man, when what's his name, even though he's a commie, rolled out with that thing, gotta love him. Anyways, that's it, final thoughts, that's that. And that's my latest merch, dog hair sold separately. Guys, Matt, that's honestly the best way to support the channel is through merch purchases and our ongoing gun conservation efforts over here. In fact, we just saved, thanks to confidence from all you guys and watching the videos and all that kind of stuff, we were able to save an MP18, which was no small feat, but we did it. And that beauty is not seen the welder. So look forward to that in a couple weeks. But honestly, guys, I'm just here to say whatever history I can and bring it to you guys in tidy little vids like this. Ultimately, guys, the goal is to gun pill the world and, uh, not only destigmatize, but even normalize civilian gun ownership, because that's how we're ultimately going to save this stuff long term for generations to come. Anyways, thanks, 10 guys. We're going to continue trying to find more great examples of firearms in their original condition and bring them, guys, to you here. Aurora and I are officially signing off. Catch you in the next one. Armored Gun out. Hey, Rabin. Hi, Rabin. Here comes Argo. Boom diggity.